Let's take a quick look at how to evaluate algebraic expressions. First, let's make sure we know what some key words mean. When you're asked to evaluate, it means we want to find the value of an algebraic expression by substituting numbers in for the variables. So, when we see an expression such as 4x minus 3y squared, we're going to take the given values of our variables and we're going to substitute them in. So we see we're being told that x should equal 3 and y should equal negative 5. So we're going to substitute those numbers in for the variables that we see in the expression. Now, we're going to use a method here to help us remember how to do this, and it's called the skeleton method. No, it's not scary, like a skeleton might be scary, but this allows us to evaluate the expression without making some common mistakes when we forget to follow our order of operations. So using the skeleton method keeps us and prevents us from making certain mistakes because it's very important to follow the order of operations when you're evaluating expressions. So the skeleton method allows us to see the expression but with the variables taken out, kind of like a skeleton, we replace the variables with empty sets of parentheses. So we're taking out the insides of the expression and what we're left with is the bones or the skeleton. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna create my skeleton for this expression. So I'm gonna keep the number four, but in the place of the X, I'm gonna put an open set of parentheses. That means I'm able to see the expression, but I've taken the variable out and I'm just leaving behind the skeleton. Then I have my minus sign and three, and then in place of that Y, I'm gonna have another set of empty parentheses, but then I'm gonna square those parentheses because the variable Y was being squared. Okay, this is my skeleton. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put back in those values for the variables. So everywhere that there used to be an X, I'm gonna replace with the number three, and everywhere where there used to be a Y, I'm gonna replace with negative five. So now I'm inserting three for X and negative five for Y. Now it's just numbers. Now all I have to do is follow my order of operations. So I'm gonna multiply my four times three here and that's gonna give me 12. Then I have minus. Now I have this three times negative five squared. Order of operations tells me that I leave the three alone, but I'm going to square the negative five, which gives me 25. Next, I'm going to multiply my 3 times 25, so I'm going to start from the left. I have 12 minus, but I haven't done anything yet. Now I'm going to do 3 times 25, so that becomes 12 minus 75, which gives me a final value of negative 63. Let's take a look at another example. So I want to evaluate this expression 7 times the quantity a plus 4, plus 3b. And again, I'm given values a equals negative 4 and b equals 5. So again, I want to start out with my skeleton, which means I'm going to remove the variables and replace them with empty sets of parentheses. So I start with the 7. Now the expression already has a parenthesis, so I'm going to open up a parenthesis for the parenthesis that's already there. Then I'm going to put inside of that, so it's called a nested parenthesis, I'm going to put another open parenthesis, empty parenthesis, for the variable a and then I'm gonna have my plus four, and then I'm gonna close that original parenthesis. Then I have plus three B, so I have plus three times another empty parenthesis. I was told the values of A and B, so now everywhere that used to have an A, I'm gonna replace that with a negative four, and everywhere where I used to see the value B, I'm replace with five. So again, now all I have is a numerical expression, because there's no more variables, so it's just numerical, and I just have to follow my order of operations. So first I'm going to work inside parentheses, and I'm going to add the negative 4 plus 4. So this becomes 7 times 0. Then I can do my multiplication, so 3 times 5 gives me 15. I have more multiplication I have to do, so I'm going to do the 7 times 0, which is 0, plus 15, for a final answer of 15. Let's take a look at another example evaluate negative x squared minus 3x plus 4 when x equals 2. Now this one we really want to pay close attention to the very beginning of this expression. 
It's really important to make note of where this negative sign is in relation to the x squared. So before I even write my skeleton, I'm going to make a note that this negative x squared means there's a negative 1 being multiplied by that variable x squared. Then I subtract 3x and then plus 4. So it's really important to make sure you understand that that negative 1 is a coefficient being multiplied by the x squared term. So the negative 1 has no part of the base. When I say that, I mean the negative 1 is not being squared with the x. Only the value of x is being squared. And that'll make more sense in a second when we make our skeleton. So now when I make my skeleton, I start with that negative 1, but it's being multiplied by an empty parenthesis for x that's going to be squared. Then when I minus 3x, I replace that x with an empty parenthesis, and then I'm going to add 4. I was told that the value of x is 2, so in every single empty parenthesis, I'm going to insert a value of 2. So now I'm at my numerical expression where I just have to follow order of operations. So the first step of order of operations tells me to do parentheses, but remember, that means what's inside the parentheses. There's only twos inside these parentheses, so there's nothing to do inside. So my next step would be exponents. So I'm going to do the base of 2, but it's being squared. So this negative 1 is still out front as a coefficient. It has not been multiplied or we haven't used it yet. So that negative 1 is going to be multiplied by the 4 that I get when I do 2 squared. Then I can multiply my 3 times 2, so I'm going to have minus 6 and then plus 4. Now I have one more multiplication step, so that's going to be the negative 1 times 4, which is negative 4 minus 6 plus 4. All I have left is adding and subtracting, so I do these in order from left to right. So I have negative 4 minus 6, which is negative 10. Then when I add 4, I get a value for my final answer of negative 6. One more example. We have the same expression as in the last example, negative x squared minus 3x plus 4, but now the value of our variable is negative 2 instead of 2. So we're going to see if that changes our final result. So remember in the earlier example where I made it really clear that we have to remember that negative sign in front of the x squared is like a negative 1 being multiplied by the value of x, which is going to be squared. Um, you don't have to write it as a big negative 1 if you don't want to. So I'm going to do a skeleton method and just a little bit differently and show you another way that you can write it. So we keep that negative sign and then we go straight to our empty parenthesis for our skeleton. So that's the empty parenthesis for the x and then we square that empty parenthesis. So I have negative sign which implies that a negative 1 is going to be multiplied by this value in the parenthesis after it gets squared. Okay, and then I'm going to subtract 3x. So I'm going to have another empty parenthesis for the x and then plus 4. Now I'm told the value of x is negative 2, so everywhere I see my empty parenthesis as my skeleton, I'm going to insert the value negative 2. Now we're going to go to order of operations. So remember your order of operations, P-E-M-D-A-S. P tells us to do what's inside the parentheses. Again, there's nothing to do inside of the parentheses here. When I look inside of each parenthesis, all I see is a negative 2. That's already simplified. There's nothing to do. So my next step is E for exponents. Now, again, you have to make sure you're following order of operations, even on this tiny little step. A lot of us will see the negative sign outside the parenthesis and then the negative 2, and we'll think, oh, two negatives make a positive. That becomes a positive 2. No, we have to do our squaring first. So let's kind of take a separate look at this down in the bottom right. I'm just going to look at this first term here. So we have the negative sign on the outside, then the parenthesis, then the negative 2 inside being squared. So that negative sign on the outside, remember, that's multiplication. I don't touch that until I finish my exponents. So really all I'm doing is the negative 2 being squared, which means I'm multiplying negative 2 by itself. And that negative sign is still on the outside. I haven't done anything with it yet. So I have that negative sign on the outside that will then get multiplied by a positive 4. Because when I do negative 2 and I square negative 2, it's negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. Then it'll be multiplied by negative for a final result of negative 4, and that's what I'm going to put in my expression. So let's go back up to our expression and see how that works. So I still have my negative sign on the outside, and now it's being multiplied by a positive 4. Then I have minus, and now I can do some multiplication here. I can do the 3 times the negative 2. 
But notice I already have a minus sign there for the subtraction. So I'm going to separate my negative 6 with a parenthesis. So I'm minusing a negative 6. Now some of you might do that in one step and just say that it's plus 6. That's fine. I'll show that in the next step. And then I end with a plus 4. So now I have this negative 4. And now I can make the minus the negative 6. I can make that a plus 6 and a plus 4. And then I just have adding, so I go left to right, negative four plus six is two, and then two plus four gives me a final result of six. So hopefully this, this last example helps you see how important the parentheses are and how important it is that you make your skeleton. Again, it's not scary, it's just there to help you keep from making mistakes. So it scares away the mistakes. All right, enjoy.